but most engines today are going to have the mechanism we're about to show you guys there. So you wanna make sure those are twisted down tight and not corroded. A Bad. major problem, get to the shop immediately, get that taken care of. And we need to make sure our connections are secure and tight. Whatever you do, do not ignore these messages. You can see the slime on my finger. So you really need to keep that clean to keep everything running, including your engine. This video is brought to you by Fort Myers Marine, a family owned full service marina that offers boat repairs, maintenance, sales, and more. Hey everyone, and welcome to today's Gale Force Twins episode. Today, we are gonna be giving you five very useful tips on how to keep your outboard engines running as long as they possibly can. We've talked to the outboard experts at Fort Myers Marine because we want this information to be coming from a reputable source for you guys. So without further ado, let's get in this video. My name's Emily. My name's Amanda. And welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. Tip number one is to maintain your oil levels. Now this is so imperative and so important. If your oil levels are too low, a plethora of things could happen. One of them being you have metal rubbing on metal causing internal damage in your engine. Now the oil is acting as a lubricant. So if you don't have enough of that, that's a big problem. Most engines will give you some kind of a warning or alarm if your oil levels are too low and whatever you do, do not ignore these messages. Another possibility is too much oil. Although that's probably not as likely, too much of a good thing is still a bad thing. One of the things that could happen is you could end up compressing oil instead of air. Once again, causing more engine damage. So now what you wanna do is you wanna check your oil levels and we're gonna show you guys what you really wanna be looking for. Of course, the first thing we have to do is take the cowling off. Now, the first time I ever did this, I was absolutely terrified. To be honest, the first time I saw someone take a cowling off their engine, I didn't even know it You're like, off. oh, I was like, I didn't know that's that how that happened. And that was many, many, many years ago. But hey, you guys could be brand new boaters and have no idea how this works. So every cowling is gonna have basically these like pull tabs. They might be in different spots. On this engine, we have one in the back, one in the front. On our Intrepid, we have them on four. the sides. We have, we have four of them. It's like one, two, three, four. This one only has two. So we're gonna get this one and we're just gonna pull this cowling off and locate that dipstick. There we go. <sighs> Every manufacturer is gonna have a different procedure on how to check your oil levels. Some might want the engine warm, some might want it cold, some might want you to lift it up for five minutes and then bring it down, some one minute and then bring it down. So whatever it is, go ahead and check with your manufacturer. So we've had our engine tilted up based on what our engine requires for five minutes and then we are going to trim it all the way and down. And we tilt it up Yep, we tilt it up oil. so that the oil can drip down into the crankcase. This yellow handle or tab right here is gonna be our dipstick. So I'm gonna go ahead and just carefully pull this out. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take a clean paper towel and clean it off, okay? Because we are gonna stick it back in. But let's take a look. You see we have these, um, these like hash marks on our dipstick. And ideally your oil levels are gonna be right between the two directly in the middle. That's gonna be the perfect amount of oil. So we are gonna go ahead, put this back in one time, okay? Then we're gonna pull it out and see where it is. So Emily, do we look good? We look pretty good. We look pretty good. Maybe a little low, honestly, we might need to add a little bit more, but this looks really good. And we can also look at the color of our oil. I would say this is kind of close to the color of olive oil, maybe a little bit darker because we've been running the engine, but this is a good color. Brand new oil is basically gonna be olive oil colored. That's the best way to describe it. And it'll get more brown and darker the more you run your engine. Now black oil or dark oil doesn't necessarily mean it's horrible and end of the world, but you're probably getting close to your 100 hour service, it's time to change it. If you have really dark oil, I would just pay attention, check the hours on your engine. Now if you have milky oil, I like to think it looks like a cappuccino. So if you have cappuccino colored oil, or like, you know, latte colored oil in your engine, well, that means that you have water in your oil, which is a Bad. major problem. Get to the shop immediately, get that taken care of. You did just see our dipstick. And another possibility is if we know we didn't recently add oil to our engine and the oil levels were way high, there's a possibility that there's fuel mixing with our oil. So that's definitely something to think about and consider. 
Another possibility is if it's way low and we know we just added oil, we might have an oil leak which is also not a good thing. So these are things just to think about, you know, if your oil levels are low and you put your boat in the water, check and see if you have any oil coming out somewhere. But what we're gonna do really quick is we're gonna show you where you would add the oil. And right here, this is where you're gonna add your oil. I'm not sure if I can, okay, good. I can twist it off with my hand. Sometimes a pair of needle nose pliers will help out with that. This is where you're gonna add it. If you have a funnel, great. If you don't, pour slowly and carefully. Take your time, pour a little bit at a time try not to overdo it. One last question before moving on to tip number two is how often should you be checking your oil levels? So the answer is ideally every trip. If you're running every day and your engines have been running fine though, you're probably okay with doing it every three, four, or five trips. But the most important time I would say to do it is every time, like if your boat is at a marina and you take it out once a month. That first time you get it every month, that's, what it, that's the most important time to be checking it. Tip number two, for maintaining your engines is to flush your engines. So guys, I don't know if you've heard mixed reviews, but we've heard crazy amounts of opinions. Some people, career charter fishermen who run every day, never flush their engines. Some people don't care about it. Some people make it take it really seriously. It's all over the place. So to make things easy for you guys, we asked Brian from Fort Myers Marine what he thinks we should do. The answer is to flush your engines every time you use them. Now, depending on your motor or your engine, it's gonna depend on how you flush it. We have a built-in connection, but there's flush muffs and flush bags and buckets as well. Here is our built-in connection, and you guys can see it has an O-ring in it. I'll show you that O-ring, it's that yellow ring right yep. there. So be really careful not to lose this ring. These rings fall out a lot, and that is not there, it's vital yes, to keep your O-ring to yes. keep your engines cooled. Right. So outside of flushing, so why don't you go ahead and just screw that on. Outside of flushing your engines, if you lose your O-ring, your engine might not be getting the cooling it needs when it's running. Oops. So just pay attention to that O-ring, make sure you don't lose it. And if you do, go get yourself a new one. Once the hose is attached, you would turn the hose water on and let it run for 15 minutes. Now we are actually just freshwater fishing today and we are still currently right around the boat ramp. So we don't have access to water, but because we're freshwater fishing, we don't have to flush it. So guys, that's something else. The flushing applies to salt water. Tip number three is to keep your fuel clean. Now you might ask, what on earth does that mean? That basically means we don't want water getting in our fuel. And the next question is, well, how does water get in our fuel in the first place? Usually when you're getting fuel at a marina on the water, you're usually not gonna have this problem because they're using Rec 90 non-ethanol fuel. Most of the time, the issues are gonna happen when you don't have access to a marina on the water or you're choosing to get fuel at a gas station, which we do it too. It's cheaper, it's more affordable, it makes a lot of sense. There's nothing wrong with that, but this is when you wanna pay attention to your fuel water filter. Now, this is one of those tips that preventative maintenance is key. It's kind of tough to do anything about it after the fact other than a trip to the mechanic for a lot of repairs. The best thing to do is make sure you're getting your maintenance every 100 hours and making sure your marina is replacing your fuel water separator. Right now you are looking in the bilge of our hues and specifically you're looking at the fuel water separator. Now most of them are going to look just like this. They might have a little bit of a different appearance but that is what you're looking at and what the fuel water separator does pretty self-explanatory. It separates the water from your fuel before the fuel goes into the engine. So it's the step between the fuel tank and the engine. So what happens if your fuel water separator fills up with water and you haven't had your 100 hour service yet? What's going to happen is there's an element sensor on your engine that's going to send an alarm to you and let you know that water is now getting to your engine. Once again, listen to your alarms, go to your mechanic and get it taken care of. Some other possible scenarios for getting water into your fuel tank. One of them, maybe it's absolutely pouring rain, you left your fuel cap open. Another one is the gas stations just had tons of water in their fuel and you were the unlucky guy. Another possibility that does happen. Sticking your hose into the fuel tank because you Thinking think it's, it's your fresh water yes. tank and filling it all up with hose water, which does happen. Now, if something like that happens, immediately call the shop. Don't even start your engine. There are other things you can do to get that fixed, but it does happen. So that is why your fuel water separator exists. 
and why it's so important and why it's important to make sure that it's getting replaced every 100 hours. Now, if you live in an area where you've seen that every gas station is giving you too much water in your fuel and it seems like you're having an issue before your 100 hour services, it might be something you yourself want to replace every 25 or 50 hours as well. Before we move on to tip number four, let's talk about what it looks like when there's water in your fuel water separator. So Brian sent us this photo and you can see what he did was he emptied the fuel water separator and there's a lot of water in that fuel. Probably make a whole video for you guys on just how to change your fuel water separator, but I think we should move on to tip number four, which is keeping your battery terminals tight and clean. Salt water is extremely corrosive and your battery terminals and lugs are metal. So you're gonna take salt water and metal and it's the perfect environment for corrosion. So I'll have this photo pop up from Fort Myers Marine of what really bad corrosion looks like. The best thing to do here is to prevent it before it even happens. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna loosen our battery terminals and use some sort of anti-corrosion spray. So we're looking at the battery. You guys can see the nut right there. So that's what I'm gonna wanna come in and loosen just there there we go loosen it just enough so now i can loosen it and get some anti-corrosion spray in there there we go getting our anti-corrosion spray in there and what we're going to do is we're going to want to like wiggle everything around just to make sure that it gets everywhere and then tighten the nut back down and we're going to want to tighten that nut back down nice and tight why don't we grab our wrench and then we're going to want to tighten everything down and just make sure that everything is secure because without a secure connection your engines will probably not start so let's say your engines aren't starting. A quick thing that you can check yourself is what we just showed you. Make sure your nuts on your batteries are nice and tight, but there's another connection on the engine itself. So let's say you get it looking good on the batteries and it still doesn't start. There's one more connection to check. Exactly, so what we're gonna do is that our battery is in our console right here. And we know that the cables run through the bilge and you can actually see them. I'm gonna come around really quickly down in here. Right now we are looking in the bilge and Emily, can you point to the black and red cables? So we can see those running through the bilge and then the cables will run through this tubing. We already took our cowling off. You can see the cables right here. And we're gonna come around. And, and right now you are looking at the red or positive connection. You can see the lug nuts and terminals right there. So we wanna make sure those are twisted down tight and not corroded. It's a good idea every couple years to have your service center, cut your wiring back, put new ends on and get everything treated. Last and final tip, tip number five, is to keep your bilge clean. Now the guys at Fort Myers Marine, so the amount of boats that come in with issues and they look into the bilge and just the bilge is disgusting. It's moldy, it's slimy, there's fish blood in it. Whatever it is, you guys realize there's a lot going on in your bilge. We have wiring, we have some of our, some bilges have batteries in them. Um, we've got your bilge pump, you've got your live well pumps. You've got a lot of really important tools in your bilge. So you really need to keep that clean to keep everything running, including your engine. So think about every single time you go fishing and you go mahi fishing and there's fish blood all over the boat. Maybe there's pilchard scales every year and you clean the boat and all of that ends up in your build. Your boat looks beautiful, but if you look in the bilge, you could have pilchard scales stuck in the bilge pump. You could have fish blood and there's a lot that's happening in there that can cause your bilge pump to get stuck up and on in the upright position or however, whichever bilge pump you have. But your bilge pump can get stuck on. And then what's going to happen is it's going to run and run and run. It's either going to burn out or it's going to kill your batteries. If it kills your batteries, your engine's not going to start. So keeping your bilge clean is a really good place to really focus on and clean it out with some kind of boat soap, something biodegradable, or even a bilge cleaner. They do make those. Um, we just have this biodegradable boat soap that we are going to clean it out with. But why don't we take a look at our bilge and see what it looks like? Alrighty guys, it might be tough to see. We don't have very good access to our bilge pump, but we are a great example of what your bilge pump should not look like. Hey, look at that green. Like, I'm just gonna, excuse me, reach in here. You can see the slime on my finger. You can see the slime coat I just took off. Now, we really don't have much of an excuse for our bilge pump looking like that, our bilge pump, our bilge other than the fact that we've only owned this boat for a short amount of time and haven't personally cleaned our bilge yet. Still absolutely not an excuse. With a bilge that looks like that, I would definitely honestly get a pressure washer down there, get the soap going, like wow, this bilge needs some TLC. So I know you just saw a great example of what a badge build looks like, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop up some pictures of what more bad bilges look like that Brian from Fort Myers Marine also sent us. You guys can clearly see 
how important it is to keep your bilge clean because everything leads to that. Everything's, everything's connected. So you can't just worry about your engines. You have to worry about your batteries. You have to worry about your oil levels. I mean, there are so many things to worry about, but we hope these tips were helpful. We just want to say thank you to Fort Myers Marine for helping us put this video together. It was great to talk to some outboard engine experts and really get the right tools necessary for you guys on knowing how to keep your outboard engine running as long as possible. Now, if you're looking for some maintenance for your boat, you need some repairs, maybe you're looking to buy a boat, we'll go ahead and put the Fort Myers Marine information in our description box. We hope you guys learned a lot. We want you to get out there, have fun, and stay safe.